Hey guys, Andy Tran here with the Inner Bark Outdoors channel. If it's your first time here, welcome. I do two videos in a week on the outdoors, do-it-yourself, survival, and reviews. But uh, in this video, I wanted to just do a little bit of load development. It's come to my attention that too many of you have blown up guns, and some of you could also use some help dialing in proper ammo. Because let's face it, a big reason why we reload is so that we can have better ammo than you can buy at a store. First things first, it's garbage in and garbage out. I use brass that I know the history of if I can't buy brand new. I measure and trickle each charge during the load development phase for all my firearms and 100% of all the rounds for my precision loads. For this, I am loading two cartridges for each charge weight and have them written on the brass prior to funneling the powder in. I went in 0.2 grain increments. Then I'll seat each bullet to SAMI spec using steps provided by the manufacturer for the dies. We can play with the seating depth later. I went to a local shooting pit to log the data. All right, so I'm gonna be using my magneto speed chronograph to be clocking in all the velocities. And so to make this kind of field expedient, what I'm gonna do is load 10 rounds into the magazine, smallest to largest, and then uh, I'm gonna record that in here. That way I'm not loading single by single. So, actually, go highest first. So, 40.8 grains, 40.6 grains. I'm not going to bore you with all the shots, but basically, I write down all of the data just in case it's not saved onto the memory card. So, the primer here on the right. Uh, looks fine. So there's no cratering, there's no flowing. And if you look at the head stamp, there's a little bit of a mark from the ejector, but nothing that really causes me any alarm. And if you look at this one, which is for maximum pressure, um, you can actually feel that the primer just started to flow a little bit into the, the, uh, the hole there. And if you look right there, you can kind of see that it kind of comes um, and protrudes out a little bit from the surface of the rest of the primer. So we might not go to max for this one. All right, so we are back at the living room and I went ahead and imported all of the data from the Magneto Speed. And uh, the Magneto Speed and a few other more advanced chronographs out there have a really nice function where they store everything in a card. You just plug it into your computer and then in the case of the Magneto Speed, um, it already creates a file um, for Excel. So it came out with all this information. This is the first shot group that I did. You can see it's numbered one through 10. Then here's a second, also one through 10. And so I did a quick graph of uh, series one and series two, and they kind of look similar. They kind of have the same slope to them. And so what I did was I copy and pasted the numerical values for each of the shots um, along with the actual grain weights that are um, represented for each of those numbers. And then I did a combined graph. And so right here you'll see the actual um, two shot series lined up to each other. So they're pretty similar, actually very similar. Um, there's a couple outliers like this one right here is a little bit strange but overall they're all pretty good. And so the thing that we're looking for is some sort of flatness in this graph. And so the flatness that I'm seeing in this is, don't need that notification. Uh, the flatness that I'm seeing right here is right here between 39.8 grains and 40.2 grains of Reloader 17. And so smack dab in the middle of that is exactly 40 grains, which is a really easy number to remember. So I think that's what I'm gonna play with. And uh, I think the next thing I wanna do is 
go ahead and load up uh, five rounds of 40 grains and then see what our standard deviation is. In theory, the standard deviation should be pretty, uh, pretty low, somewhere around the low teens, um, if not single digits. So that's what I'm hoping for and uh, that'll be what I do next. And I probably won't film that um, just to save you guys some time. But what I do want to do is play with the seating depth with the 40 grain charges. The standard deviation for my loads came out to 11 feet per second, which I'm happy with. I went over to my property in the desert to zero in the rifle and to proof the ballistic calculator. Not sure how much you can hear, but here we go anyway. So I just and it's way too windy for you to catch any of my audio. I put the target as directly upwind as possible to keep the windage out of the equation. In the little valley that I'm shooting for the zero, it's blowing about 10 to 15 miles an hour. There's no bullseye, but I'm using center mass point of aim and using the mill marks in reference to the top and edge of the target to make sure that I'm aiming at the exact same spot every time. After zeroing at 100 yards, we'll check the calculator at 375 yards. I'll be using the Hornady forward off calculator, which I'm actually really, really liking. There's a lot of parameters that you can set. I dial in all the information that the calculator outputted and really concentrate on my trigger control. Here with the wind, it's really difficult to hear the steel. With the wind coming in from the two o'clock, I am hitting on the left edge still. So I add another half mil of windage, which puts the wind at approximately 20 miles an hour. So let's take a look at this target. The first shot at the clavicle was my sighting in round. These two shots right here, center mass, were my zero, and that's what I settled on. All these other shots were from 375 yards. The elevation was spot on, but the varying wind caused a lot of horizontal spread. But the drop data is good and spot on. This is the method that I use to develop my charge weight for reloading. It's by far the most important step because it can really mean the difference between really good ammo and blowing up your rifle. If you guys have any comments or questions, go ahead and message me direct or comment down below. If you guys enjoyed the video, please like, share, and subscribe, and also check out my Instagram, Facebook page, and other social media. It really helps me know these are the kind of views you want to see. But as always, take care out there. Bye.